Hello, this is Professor White, and I'll be discussing about evidence of evolution. Now, evolution, as we know, is a change in the population of organisms over time. Genetic change, to be specific. Now, there are four types of evidence that scientists have gathered in support of evolution. One is fossil. The second is comparative anatomies and structures, embryology, and biochemistry, which is proteins and DNA. Now we'll start first with fossils. Now what is a fossil? Well, fossil is a preserved remains of organisms or traces of these organisms that is no longer living. Now this is usually found in sedimentary rocks, as you can see over here in this uh, picture, and stuck in layers of rocks just like here in the Grand Canyon. Now what can fossils show? Of course, Organisms have appeared and disappeared and have changed over time, and therefore um, it shows extinction of species. And um, the transitional forms actually reveals the link between Archaeopteryx, like between reptiles and birds, the Eustheophthoron, which is an amphibious fish, and your Simoria, which is a reptile-like amphibians. Now also mammal-like reptiles and whales with hind limbs reveals ancient climate and environmental conditions uh, that that is also evident in uh, fossils as well as the indication and the development of life from simple to complex as well as it indicates life began in water. Now there are different types of fossils. First is your imprint, which is a thin, um, usually thin and soft object. Sometimes they are imprinted in the leaf or feathers that is buried in sediment that later hardens. Second is the mold. So these are organisms that are buried, disappears, and leaves an empty space. The third one is your cast. This is mold filled by uh, minerals or kind of like a replica of the organism and fourth is your petrification um, in terms of minerals now the minerals um, they replace the hard parts like the bones the teeth of um, organisms and lastly we have your amber uh, wherein the entire organism is actually fossilized, just like in a tree sap, for example. Number six, we have your entire organism frozen in ice. And number seven, we have your footprints, trails, etc. So these are your types of fossils. So you can see here, so here are some pictures for types of fossils. Now, how can fossil age be determined? Now, the depth of fossils can help determine their age, of course, and the lower layers are usually older than those that are in upper layers. And also another technique is your radioisotope dating, which uses carbon-14 and uranium-238, um, potassium-40, and this measures the proportion of an isotope relative to its more stable form, which we call it half-life. So that's another way of determining the age of the fossil. Now, why is the fossil record incomplete? Well, soft tissues are very delicate and therefore it's rarely preserved. Uh, movements of the Earth's crust has obliterated many uh, fossils or have covered many fossils. Now, fossilization takes place only in certain types of habitats and under favorable conditions, which is why the fossil records are incomplete. Number four, paleontologists have not dug up every place on Earth, obviously, which is why the fossil records are incomplete. Now let's move on to comparative anatomy. Now, comparative anatomy is the study of um, anatomical structures and uh, to find similarities and differences. Now, one evidence of evolution is the homologous structures. These are the parts with similar basic structure, which is derived from the same structure in an embryo, which is the same common descent, but may vary in function. So here's an example. All of these are homologous structures. The human bones, horse, cat, birds, bat, and whale, all of these, they have similar bone structures. But then again, the function of each of these um, structures are different, which we that's why it's called homologous structure. Now, what about analogous structure? These are structures that have the same function. They may look somewhat alike 
but have different structure and do not have a common descent. An example would be the wings that have developed independently in insects, reptiles, birds, and bats. So as you can see here in this example, the bats' uh, wings and the birds' wings are totally two different structure but their function is the same, which is for flying. Now, the third structure is your vestigial structure. These are reduced body parts in comparison to the same complex structure in other organisms that have little to no function. And uh, they believe this is a remnant of an ancestor. So some examples is your human appendix. In other mammals, it is actually necessary to aid in the digestion. The human external ear muscle, so you, you, some people can move their ears. Now, it is actually useless, but but it's still there and you have your human tailbone or the coccyx and the human wisdom teeth as well as the bird's wings now penguins have adapted for swimming and ostrich wings for balance and courtship so these are some pictures you got your appendix right there and your coccyx which is your human tailbone now the next evidence is embryology now patterns of embryological development can indicate a common ancestry such as the birds, fish, mammals, and reptiles, they all have gills, only fish retains theirs. Now the fish, birds, humans, and reptiles all have tails, all but humans retain theirs. So as you can see here in the embryological development, this is the first few weeks of development of all of these organisms. They have similar structure. As you can see here in this comparison, of the humans, fish, rabbit, salamander, pig, cow, chicken, and tortoises. As you can see in the development, there are similarities in different stages of the embryo, which is an evidence of evolution. How about biological similarities? Now, uh, the similarities of proteins, RNA, and DNA molecules can tell if the organisms are closely related and the more similar their biochemical makeup the more related they are and it indicates common ancestry universality of genetic code supports evolution similar chemistry and structure of chromosomes among eukaryotes are are pretty um, telling and chlorophyll is the same basic molecule in all photosynthetic organisms i hope it helps in understanding the different evidence of evolution, which is your fossils, your anatomical structure, embryological structure, and your biochemistry or your proteins and DNA similarities. If you have any questions, let me know. This is Professor White. Have a great day. Bye.